Hey there folks, I am Blunty. Something a bit different for you today. This is the first of a short series of videos in which I'll be profiling each of the four Soviet-era Russian lenses that were gifted to me recently by a warm-hearted and very generous viewer who has had these stashed under his bed for years and, in giving them to me, hoped to see them put to use in the world once more. So I'll be talking a bit about the lens's history and heritage, and then showing you a collection of photos sucked in through these old optics. If you missed the original unboxing video when I received these lenses, by the way, it'll be linked in the description, of course. So I've spent a couple of weeks playing with these lenses, and I've got a pretty good feel for them now. And first up to bat is what I've now discovered is called the Jupiter 11, and apparently it's a bit of a cult classic. The Jupiter 11, which actually comes in a variety of mounts and casing designs thanks to its decades-long life in production, is actually a copy of a pre-war Zeiss Sonar 135F4, and is using the exact same optical design. And if you know much about lenses, you'll know that the German engineering from from Zeiss is a very desirable thing indeed. So it's 135mm focal length with an f4 aperture adjusted steplessly and smoothly down to f22 and by today's standards it has a relatively simple four lens element optical design and of course it's entirely manual focus. The focus goes from a minimum of 2.5 meters out to infinity and the throw of the focus ring from end to end is about 180 degrees. The one I have here is an M39 lens mount, also known as the Leica thread mount, which was common in Leica rangefinders and their Soviet clones. And according to the serial number, my copy was manufactured way back in 1963, making it a nice round 50 years old. And from the same year that saw both the assassination of John F. Kennedy and saw the Soviets launch Lieutenant Valentina Treshkova into orbit, making her the first woman in space. And I hope I pronounced her name properly. Lieutenant Valentina Treshkova. Any Russians out there, feel free to correct me. So for the especially nerdy lens geeks out there, this particular variation of the Jupiter 11 is the PT8225 model, released by Coms, and I hope I pronounced that correctly, starting in 1961. And my copy is in surprisingly good condition for a lens of this age, and from Soviet-era Russia. It came to me a bit thick with dust and grime, but it cleaned up quite nicely indeed. And although I haven't polished up the barrel yet, I think I really want to take some brass or something to it to get it shining brightly once more. So this simple screw mount also makes it extremely easy to adapt to other modern camera mounts. And most users of these types of lenses today use them on Leicas, of course, and Sony NEX cameras and Micro Four Thirds cameras. The lens ring adapters are easy to find. You can even get from Amazon, and they don't cost much at all. And for my testing, I had it bolted onto my trusty Olympus Pen EP3. So what about the results? Well, I was kind of astounded, to be honest with you. This is the first time I've used optics this old before. Before now, the oldest glass I'd shot with had spent about the same three decades on the planet that I have. So, for a 50-year-old Soviet copy of a lens designed in pre-war Germany, I'd expected a more flawed image. I'd expected flares and softness and vignetting and scratches and spots and any number of little imperfections. And not just because it's an old lens design, but because it has spent 50 years bouncing around the planet. But what I got was nothing short of beautiful and inspiring and exciting. Even on my trusty EP3, which has no real manual focus assist function outside of a 2 times zoom cropping, focus was still predictable and reliable, and the image sharpness itself was far beyond what I'd anticipated. I've got modern kit lenses sitting on my shelf right now, made in the last couple of years, that couldn't outperform this half-century-old Soviet lens. The light it sucks in takes on an almost liquid quality. Right out of camera, things are slightly low contrast, but the tones and the colours are simply wonderful. The bokeh is smooth and organic, and thanks to the 12 rounded aperture blades, the bokeh balls are wonderfully spherical right across the frame. But I'm going to shut my gob now and just let you absorb what I managed to pull in through the Jupiter 11. Speaking personally, a few of these shots are now buried deep in my very favourite photos I've ever taken. Oh, and here's a fun game to play. Try and count how many seconds pass before you're thinking about hitting eBay to get a Jupiter 11 off your very own. Thanks for watching. I am Blunty, and I will catch you next time.